get behind the wheel. Uh, okay. Hey guys. Hey guys, this is Kodak Kira, and as you can see, I have managed to secure myself a little Monsuno. Monsuno is the new series I've been talking about that's being made by Jack Specific that is kind of a competition with Bakugan. It's actually made by the same guys who designed Bakugan, uh, Luke Peter Schmidt and Rob Noss, who uh, I've actually been talking to a lot recently. Um, anyway, these are the Monsuno. You'll notice it's not the same pack as what I showed off on my blog, and that's because I actually found a defect in that pack. That's not, that's that's really not a good sign. I really hope the quality control on these in here are a bit better. Anyway, this is the Combat 4-pack. So it contains four Monsuno, which are Charger, Glowblade, Ricochet, and Black Bullet. Two of them are from Cortec, and two of them are from Storm. This pack cost me about $28, which means each Monsuno inside was about $7. That's a bit more than Bakugan, but I think the price point they were aiming for was actually Beyblade and Ninjago, so it is a little bit cheaper than both of those. I think the single packs are $8 and the double packs are 15 So you kind of save a little bit the more you buy in quantity, which means it's actually got kind of a reasonable scale here. There's some other things like some arenas and some launchers and stuff that are also going to come out with it, so it's meant to be a lot like Beyblade. Anyway, let's get these open. Here they are, the four capsules. Now, I admit these are actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting. I was at least expecting something that could go across my palm. This thing kind of goes maybe two-thirds of the way. I guess that's kind of how toys are. Anyway, it came with two Cortec Monsuno. The Cortec Monsuno are blue, and I'm pretty sure they're the good guys, the ones who used it. I think Charger is actually used by uh, by Jinja. Um, and, and we have the Storm Monsuno over here. The Mon Storm Monsuno are yellow and I think they're like some kind of government agency or something. Anyway, in order to get them to work, I'm going to take Charger here, and you strike it, it they're supposed to spin at each other, and when they hit a hard surface, ooh, they launch out the little Monsuno. In this case, we have a moose called Charger. <laughs> you know, I kind of portray this thing as wicked awesome by saying it's my moose cannon. Oh, you are a moose cannon, Charger, but you are a darn good cop. Anyway, I'll be showing some more close-ups of these at the end of the video. For now, I just kind of want to get this done. Now, there's another feature in order to keep it from firing off in your pocket. There's actually a lock on here. When you push it towards the middle, it keeps it from flying out when you strike it against the surface. Disengage the lock by pulling it down, and it works just like normal. This is another Cortec. It's called Glowblade. It's actually a Hydra. Huh. A Hydra in a series by Luke Peterschmidt. Hmm. Big surprise. Anyway, I can't really demonstrate it too well on here because it doesn't work so well. But the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to take the short side, put your finger on it, and it's supposed to spin out, kind of like that. But the thing is, you really need a hard surface to do it. You need a good hard table. This poker table and this mat, it just doesn't cut it. So you're going to need something pretty solid, like like a, a wood floor or something like that in order to get it to work. Now, you can get it to spin either counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on which side you launch it from. So anyway, this is one called Ricochet. It's kind of a... Uh, it's one of the shorter ones. It kind of totally takes up its space, but it's kind of a, it's a, it's a Hercules beetle, which looks pretty cool. It's called Ricochet. I think it has about the same power level as Charger, if I recall right. Anyway, the thing is, because each Monsuno is restricted to a different zone, they don't come in a variety of colors like Bakugan do. However, there are still ones that are analogous with each other, like Black Bullet here, which looks kind of like a bird. Black Bullet actually has a very similar looking counterpart called Evo in the Cortex series. I think he's another one of Chase's Monsunos. And he came in the other pack that I got that I got before. But they're very similar. They have similar effects on their card. They both benefit from direct attacks and they both look very similar. So each group is probably going to get its own analogous thing. There's probably going to be a Charger in the other groups and a Glowblade in the other groups. So Really, we'll just have to see. They said they're like going to be 105 of them. Even if you divide that three ways, that's still 35 different critters for a first run, and that's actually pretty impressive. It also came with some cards. The cards, um, they come with the character cards, they come with that character signature attack, and they come with some additional cards. So each one comes with three cards, and um, <laughs> I play tested these, so I know what all these numbers mean. Now, they have kind of a simple little game about spinning them at each other. Now, what makes me worry is that maybe the big game... I don't know if the big game will have a place for these. I kind of find that a bit worrying. We have, of course, three teams. We have the Cortec, which I was showing you before. They're kind of the heroes. They come in kind of blue and white. 
and they are um, they are supposedly the good guys. There is Storm, which is like a government organization trying to gather up tons of Monsuno in power. And there is Eclipse, who use red ones, and I didn't get. They came in the other set, so you can kind of take a look at the thing I posted on my blog. Like being the good guys, they're probably wide-eyed idealists. And Eclipse, with a name like Eclipse, and based on their color and how their monsters look, they're definitely up to something. They're probably up to no good. They're probably a villainous organization who's doing no good. Storm, on the other hand, I think they might actually behave a bit more like Cold World America. They're still a bit ruthless, yes, but the thing is, playing nice doesn't really work against Maniacs. So I imagine they're mostly gathering the power for their own defense. Now, the show, because it has three sides, I think it could be really interesting. At its worst, it would be just like Redekai. It would be just as boring, uninspired, stupid, invincible, designated heroes, just like Team Stacks. And Storm and Eclipse would just kind of be alternating generic villains of the week. Now, at its best, it would probably be like a thrilling Cold War analog where we have a true menage a trois, where each side disagrees with each other for its own reasons. I mean, Eclipse, based on how they sound, they're probably trying to take over the world or something, and Cortex struggle against them would probably be a bit more generic good versus evil. But Storm, on the other hand, I think it could be a more... a more compelling, more interesting, more mature kind of conflict of idealism versus cynicism. Like Storm, they don't really want to try to take over the world, but the thing is, playing nice doesn't work too well against maniacs, so they've had to do it their way. You know, I think it would be interesting if all the sides were kind of portrayed interestingly, and it was actually turned into a real sort of series where Cortec has to kind of take their idealism and temper it with the real reality. I think that could actually be really good. Now, they were originally going to try releasing these in the fall. I think they took one look at Redekai and say, oh, we don't want to do that. So hopefully they fixed it up. It only took five days for the people who made the tick to turn it around. So with a good turn around, that would be pretty good. Now, the thing is, each of these capsules are about eight bucks. There were seven bucks each because I bought them in a four pack and thus saved a little bit of money by spending more. I know that's kind of a paradox right there. But um, their price point is aimed at Beyblade, not at Bakugan. So I can't really imagine why. Beyblade is a lot more popular than Bakugan right now. It's also kind of the same price point as Ninjago. And, of course, all three of them use spinning. But um, for now, you know, it's a little bit on the expensive side. And like I said, I had to return that first one, which was a little, a little worrying. Anyway... Um, I think if they uh, they made some versions of these little critters without the capsules, like if they just sold the critters on their own without the capsules in booster packs, they could probably make them really cheap, like maybe three, four dollars at most, and then we'd start getting into competitive territory. Anyway, that's just the basics of Monsuno. I'll try to see if I can get some more. In fact, I don't know if I should have even gotten these. So um, anyway, until next time, this is Kodak signing off. Uh -huh.